Hey everyone, it's Diabetic Danica, and if you don't know, I have pretty much been a tourist for the past like six months because I had my internship in New Jersey, and so during that time I was going to New York and um, Philadelphia, New Jersey obviously, <laughs> and Virginia, and like all those places around there, and kind of being a tourist walking around, and then recently of course I've been in England and doing all that touristy stuff, so I thought I would give some tips on being a tourist with diabetes because it can get a little bit tricky. So the main thing with being a tourist with diabetes are, oh my goodness, the lows. Like, for the love of insulin, could I please not go low anymore? Pretty much when you're a tourist, you're just walking and walking and walking and walking and walking and walking, and you just don't stop, ever. You just keep walking. And <laughs> whether you're walking to the bus or the train or the airport, or just to see all the sights. And so, with all that walking brings all the lows, the low blood sugars. At one point in London, we had been walking around so much that I literally put my pump on 0% basal. That means I was getting no insulin, and I was constantly eating Haribo, I think that's how you say it, Haribo, Haribo? They're like little gummy snacks. And I was like, constant intake of those, constant intake of biscuits, or if you're American, cookies. And I was still low. I had no insulin, I was eating all these carbs, and I was going low. And I was like, I think London cured my diabetes. So it's just crazy to me that I could have all that going on and still be going low. So what I quickly discovered is that you need to do a temp basal long before you ever start walking. What I would do sometimes is I would start walking and realize, oh, this is going to make me go low, I should do a temp basal. And so I would pick like negative, whatever, 70% for like four hours that I was going to be out. That might be a little bit long for negative 70%, but you get what I mean. And so I would do that after I already started walking. But the thing is, is that it takes a little bit for a negative basal to really take effect because if you think about it, you still have all this insulin still in your body and so you're still using that while you're walking and so it makes you go low. But if you do it beforehand, then by the time you start walking, uh, the lack of insulin will be apparent in your body. Hopefully that makes sense. So just remember to do a temp basal long before you start walking, like I'd say half an hour. I'm not a doctor, but that's kind of roughly, even 15 minutes I think will do it. Another problem I've been having is just running out of snacks. Like, I feel like I just am always buying Haribo, Haribo, you know, the candy things. Because they're easy and they're pretty cheap. They're only a pound for a whole bag. And they taste pretty good, but now I'm getting sick of them. They're also easy to carry, they don't melt or anything, so it's awesome. I just feel like I'm constantly buying those and I'm constantly running out and it's just like, really? <laughs> So make sure you either bring a lot of snacks or you have a lot of cash to keep buying snacks because as you're going low and eating them and just running out, it's very stressful if you don't have any with you. And then also if you're like me and you're a student or trying to save money and you're staying in hostels, make sure that you have snacks with you for the nighttime because this was me every night in a hostel. My Dexcom would vibrate and I would get up and I would just eat all night long. <laughs> And then it might vibrate again because I went high, and then I would correct with some insulin. Then I'd go low again, and I'd have to get up and eat again. It was just constant. And at one point, I was actually really worried because I started to feel like I was running low on snacks, and I didn't have anywhere that I could really buy more. And so I just like cut off all my insulin, and I was like, I do not want to go low anymore. If I run out of snacks, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to like leave the hostel. And so I did that, and I went really high. So make sure you have snacks because you don't want to overly be cautious and make yourself go high just so you don't go low. If you had snacks, then you wouldn't have to do that. But it's just hard because you're eating them all day, so even though you've brought a lot, or you're buying a lot, you keep having to buy more. And also, just be prepared to be that weird girl in the hostel, or guy, who is um, waking up in the middle of the night and eating sweets. Because I'm sure at least one person that was staying in that room with me told their friends later, yeah, there wasn't really any weird people in the hostel, but there was this one girl who she, she just like kept waking up in the middle of the night just to eat candy and, and kind of pig out. And I don't know why, it was the weirdest thing. So just come to terms with the fact that you're going to be the weird kid in the hostel that everyone talks about. Maybe. Because literally it was like pretty much all night long. I'd be like waking up, crackle, crackle, crackle with my hairy bow and nom, 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 nom. All night long in a quiet room with like 14 people who I didn't really know. So those are pretty much my main thoughts with being a tourist with diabetes. It's not all that different besides all the lows. And as always, make sure you have a bunch of extra supplies with you in your bag so that you can change your set or refill your insulin if you need to, all of that good stuff. If you came to this video looking for tips on travel with diabetes, like the airport and security and all of that, I did a different video on that and I'll link it below and probably on the screen as well. So check that out as well. 
and this will actually be my last video from England. I go home next week and so I thought I would say goodbye from England. You have been beautiful and wonderful and if you're from England, you have an awesome country. Um, and I will see you back in America, all of you diabuddies. And also I need to do a shout out. I haven't done a shout out in a long time, so shout out time. This shout out is for the website Healthio360, I think you pronounce it like that. It's basically a site for videos and stories of people who are dealing with medical conditions, I guess. So like diabetes is one of them, but they also have all these other kinds where people can upload a video about their story. And so a bunch of my videos are on there. I have my profile on there that I can link below. And they're just a really awesome site if you want support for something that you're dealing with. And they do a really good job, so go check them out and uh, shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Facebook, the links will be below, and also Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, although I don't post there anymore, and I think that's it. So be sure to follow me everywhere, uh, not in a creepy way though, in a social media type way. I hope you all are having a fantastic holiday season, and I'll see you soon. Bye! In America!